this Sunday? No, no, for real, what are you doing this Sunday? Well, I want to invite you, I want to invite you, I want to invite you out for online worship. It's going to be explosive. God has a word for you this Sunday, and you don't want to miss it. I'm Pastor Barrett of the Empower Living Church. You are personally invited to come out and join us. Go to our website, empoweredliving.church, or catch us on Roku, or YouTube, or somewhere else. All right, see you soon.
welcome you to another Empowered Sunday's worship experience here at the Empowered Living Church. God is still on the throne, and we're excited about being in his earth today, uh, touching a little taste of heaven today as we honor him with our anointed worship today. We're going to do something new. You're going to experience a new worship experience today. Just tell me what you think about it. Why you have, while I have your attention, while I have your attention, go ahead and like us, forward us. Uh, for this service right now. As a matter of fact, start a watch party. If you're at home streaming this, grab your loved ones, tell them to come and join you on the couch, on the side of the bed, on the floor, wherever you are going to watch it today and experience and worship with. Join us in worship however you are today, this moment today, wherever you are, and experience the goodness and glory of God. Did I tell you to like this on YouTube? Did I tell you to share this? Come on, somebody. Come join us. Follow us as we go forward here the Empower Living Church. We're enthused and excited about you. Let's go before the throne of grace today. Let's get us started. Uh, let's get us started today. Lift up your hands wherever you are today. Yes, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father God, we come before you. We establish you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords of our life. And Father, we're ecstatic to be in your presence today. We're honored to come before you today, Father. We ask for your forgiveness, huh? Father, of our sins and our shortcomings and our frailties, Lord. We present ourselves as holy as we can before you, God, because you are holy. Hallelujah. Let us be the righteousness of God today, Father, as we go forth to experience more of you, more of your promises, more of your splendor, more of your joy today. And we say thank you. Someone shout thank you. Somebody shout thank you. Hallelujah. Well, let's get it started today. We're going to go into worship. Before we go into worship, we're worshiping with another church today. And they're going to provide us our worship experience. So I want you to let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about it. We're trying something new here with the Empowered Sundays. Empowered Sundays. We're really excited about it. We are launching, we're launching our online church experience on January 18th for Martha King Weekend. I'm really excited about the new things that are coming your way on Empower TV. So if you don't, if you have Roku, Fire TV, Android TV, or Apple TV, find us there, Empower Living TV, and you'll see Empower Living Church. Uh, God is expanding his kingdom uh, through us. We're reaching people throughout the world, and it's really a grand experience seeing people being inspired, fulfilling themselves with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and coming into the understanding of their new relationship with God. An extraordinary one too. It's really just it's a ball. I said, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time with it. So let's pray. If you have any prayer requests, please send them my way. Go to our website, thepowerliving.church, and hit the prayer button and submit your prayer request there. It goes directly to me. Or you can send an email to prayer at empowerliving.church and we'll get it that way. Or you can even text, text the word prayer to 704 uh what's one? 434. 3944-704-464-3944. Text the word prayer, and we'll get it that way. too. I, I, I have so many phone numbers, I got confused for a second. Forgive me. But let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started today. Father God, we thank you now, dear Lord. Hallelujah, God, for your goodness and your mercy, dear Lord. We ask that you sanctify this moment, dear Father. We create this moment, dear Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Let it be set aside for you. Let us experience all that you have for us today, Father, on Empower Sunday, dear Lord. Somebody needs a word from you today, God. Somebody needs to experience you today, God. Someone needs to be healed in their mind, in their body, in their soul, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, dear Father. Go ahead and rush to them now, dear Lord. Give them the warmth of your love. Hallelujah, God. Give them the victory of healing. You be Jehovah Rapha in their life today, Father. Come on, God. Do us to it today, dear Lord. Hallelujah, God. Today is the beginning of the month, dear Father. Somebody needs a financial blessing today, dear Lord. So we're believing right now. Yes, yes, yes. We're believing right now, dear God, that you come. Hallelujah, God. And you anoint their situation, dear Father. And you be the provider for them, dear Lord, like you did for your son Isaac, dear Lord. Uh, provide for them. Provide them a ram in a bush, dear Lord, right now. I hear somebody needs a vehicle, Father. Bless them now, dear Lord, for this vehicle, Father. They, they can get to and from to the workplace to the children, move the children around, dear Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for Thanksgiving season, Father. Some of us celebrated it with, with smiles upon our face, and others were sad and downtrodden, Father, because they were disconnected from their families, dear Lord. 
we ask you now, dear God, to, ha, to come like a mighty wind and rush into their homes where they are today, Father. Let them experience your joy, your love, Father. Let them know they're not alone, dear Lord, that you still abide with them as we abide in you. Hallelujah, God. So we thank you now. We call these things done. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said, hey, man, hey, man, give God a hand praise in this place. I'm excited about God today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And before we go on to worship, again, we have, we're partnering with the church today, and we're going to use, we're going to experience the holiness and worship today. Let me know what you think. We want to give, though. If you haven't given, it's a great time to give your tithes and your offerings today. We ask that you give 10% your first fruit. We don't, we don't ask you for it. I mean, I'm sorry. God has commanded us to do it. We just want to encourage you to do what God has commanded us to do, to give our first fruit to the storehouse. And so we invite you to do so here today. There's three or four ways to give. You can give by texting. Text a dollar amount like $33 to 84321. And we'll get it that way. Put a dollar amount in and text 84321. Cash app. Go to our cash app at dollar sign V-E-L-C. You can give it that way website and powerliving.church and hit the giving tab and powerliving.church giving tab and then lastly you can mail it to 2101 Cambridge Beltway Drive Suite D2 Charlotte North Carolina 28273 right here at our headquarters God is doing some amazing things and I'm glad we're in this season giving Tuesday is December 1st wow right around the corner it's giving Tuesday so we want to invite you to give for giving Tuesday God is doing some amazing things here in the body of Christ, and we want to invite you to be part of that. And then we'll have a celebration towards the end of the year. All right, that's it for now. Always remember this, we love you. Ha! And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with worship. You want to love this experience. And after that, we'll have a word from the Lord that God has blessed me with. City, wherever you are, just lift up a shout. If you're excited to worship with us. Come on, check it out. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light, and there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Battle you've already won, we've already won. Now, there's no weapon, and there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle, every battle you've already won, we've already won. Hey! Come on! Show me one thing you can't do. Show me a mountain you can move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Do you believe? Show me one thing that's too high. Show me waters you can't pop. He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. It's possible. Hey, hey, hey. There is a kingdom that's advancing at the speed of light, and in His kingdom, every dead thing is bound to rise. God of Redeemer, oh, He is faithful to revive, oh, He will revive. Show me one thing He can't do, show me a mountain He can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, anything is possible. 
despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out of faith I will crush disappointment and break every chain All of my fear I will turn into praise Shake up despair as I sing out your name A victory dance, I will dance out of faith The 
to the Empowered Living Church. We're really enthused and excited to have you join us here today. God still sits on the throne and he's blessing us each and every day. And we're ecstatic about it. I keep telling you God sits on the throne because I want you to understand and to appreciate the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of a plague, but God has not changed. He is the unmoved mover is his name. Come on, somebody. And so because that is the case, he had you in the past. He has you in your present He's going to have you in your future. He's not going to let you slip away if you keep running towards him. Come on, someone. Run with me this morning. Run with me this morning. Go to James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. It's in the New Testament. We're going to go through verse 2 through 4 and skip down to verse 12. I want to talk to you today upon the topic of hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Hold on and win. Ha! Hold on and win. I mean, if I was in South Indiana, I would talk about this. And I saw the game list today when Notre Dame was playing at the University of North Carolina. And I think it's appropriate because what I'm preaching to you from today, teaching you from today, is from North Carolina. So North Carolina played the University of Notre Dame. What's amazing about that is I grew up, part of my early years was in South Bend, Indiana. My mother worked at the University of Notre Dame. So when I was a, just a little young boy, I used to hang out at freshman year. And so I was indoctrinated into the University of Notre Dame traditions. And so I've been a University of Notre Dame football fan since I was knee high. Come on, somebody. But then I now live in North Carolina. And just yesterday, when I tuned into the game, football game, Notre Dame being ranked number two and North Carolina not being ranked at all, they were tied at halftime at 17-17. Ah, but what I told myself was this, hold on. <laughs> And win. What I knew was if they can get to halftime and tie, then Notre Dame was definitely going to win. Because, see, there's something about the tenacity with understanding of how to hold on and be yourself. See, Notre Dame wasn't being themselves before in the first half. But when they finally decided to hold on and be themselves, they won. You know, North Carolina did not score again. They left the game with 17 points. And Notre Dame had over 30 points. And I see... That is a football analogy for, for the people in Indiana because um, uh, and somebody told me not to use sports as an analogy to, to illustrate your message. But I'm here to tell you today, it's time to hold on so we can win. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this anointed word today, dear Lord. We ask that you pour fresh upon us, dear Father. Release your knowledge, wisdom, understanding upon us today, Father. Let those who hear me, wherever they sit, stand, lay, dear Lord, let them experience the fullness of your anointing, the fullness of your glory, the fullness of your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Father, to me, dear Lord, place me upon the potter's will. With thy hand, dear Father, anoint me now. Form me into the man of God you've asked me. Form me and to be, commanded me to be, dear Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Fresh oil upon me, dear Lord. And with the breath of life, breathe into me, dear Lord. So when I speak, I speak only the clarity and precision that you have of me to give to thy people. We ask these things in the great name of Jesus, we pray. I love you, Father. I love you, Lord. And amen. So I say amen and amen in Jesus' name. James, the first chapter, the second verse, to the fourth verse, and then the twelfth verse, it reads, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Verse 4, let perseverance finish his work so that you may be mature, mature, and complete, not lacking anything. Verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Lately, I've been want to come with re relevant on-time information, make it real to our lives today. 
And then CNN, they reported most recently, uh, as we prepared for this message today, when COVID cases had started to climb in Norton County, Kansas, the administrator of a local nursing home used the facility's homepage to send residents reminders, to send residents reminders that, uh, that you pleaded with them, please, please follow the guidelines, including wearing your mask and, and, and maintaining a distance of six feet, even when you're not in front of us. Three weeks, three weeks later, the number of infections crept, crept upward. The home went into lockdown. The administrator said, is there a responsibility with the increase of active cases? We need to take this unfortunate step, which is to lock them down. Five days later, at the beginning of October, the home announced its first positive resident. By mid-October, the nursing home had gone into full outbreak. They announced on Facebook that 61 residents, which is all the residents of the nursing home, had tested positive for the virus. At, at least 21 of the 61 today have died from COVID-19. Now, Kansas now holds the country's fifth highest seven-day positive rate as of this past week. It reported a record high hospitalization numbers according to COVID tracking project. They are growing exponentially with the amount of virus infected people of Kansas. 92% of the state's 105 counties have a moderate or high level of community transit transmission. The governor said most recently, he said this, I know we all want this to be over. We all want to run to some resemblance of normal, but we cannot return until this virus is under control, until the flat line, to, until we flatten the curve, until a vaccine is available, widely distributed, and vaccination rates are significant. Mm -hmm. But I know. And in North Dakota, let's put it into some perspective where Kansas is and where America is right now. There's 100,000 people who live in the city of South Bend, Indiana, where the University of Notre Dame is. 107,000 people to be approximately exact. Consider this. Out of 100,000 100, people in North Dakota, 135 people, which would be everybody in my former community, would have been infected in the last seven days. 135 people out of 100,000 people. And Kansas has about 94 cases out of 100,000 people. We said that 92 out of 105, 103, 105 counties are experiencing modest to high growth in the virus cases. 94 out of 100,000 people. Let's put it in perspective. North Carolina only has 29 people out of 100,000 have been infected by the virus in the last seven days. Hawaii is only seven out of 100,000 people. North Dakota, 135 and seven. North Dakota in the Midwest states, upper in the Midwest states, have rejected wearing masks all the time. They rejected, many of them have rejected the fact that some of the governments have rejected even making a mandate for people to cover their faces and their mouths to, to slow the passing of the virus. But I'm here to tell you, we are in the midst of a plague. This is a pandemic of large proportions. And what God is really telling us to do, what I'm hearing God say to do is get it together. So sometimes we got to pause, but I'm here to tell you, this is a trial. This is a test to see if we're going to be able to go through this and come out better on the other side. I know it's hard to imagine coming out better on the other side for some of us because I saw a long list of those who had funerals this past week during Thanksgiving. And it was it hurt my heart to see that our elders are passing away and that now being an elder can be 46 years of age and healthy, catch the virus and pass away. These are testing times for us but God is still in control. We have to understand to get to the other side, there has to be something for us to go through, to have a, I believe, to have a greater appreciation, to recalibrate us into what God wants us to be. Praying people. I'm here about you. I'm studying the word more. How about you? I'm praying more with greater intensity. How about you? 
I'm loving on my loved ones more with greater intensity and calling them out by name when I pray. How about you? See, God is recalibrating us now to be form us into the, who he wants us to be victorious on the other side of this pandemic. But there's some good news, too. There's some good news. A new study suggests mouthwash can kill the coronavirus and saliva in 30 seconds. It's, <laughs> that's amazing, right? Along with hand washing and other hygiene measures, mouthwash could become a routine part of everyone's daily habit. Preliminary tests were found in the University of Cardiff. It found that it, uh, to combat the coronavirus in 30 seconds by using some mouthwash. These results have not been peer reviewed yet. This is fresh. This is fresh news right here, brand fresh off of the newsreel. The 12 week study has found that mouthwashes containing 0.07% of CPC, I can't say the, the word for you, I'm gonna put it here so you can see. The CPC shows promising signs of killing the virus. Those three types of mouthwash, in case you want to go out and run out and get them, this is some good news for those who are holding back on taking the vaccination, vaccines when they come out. The three types of mouthwash that eradicate the coronavirus are dental dual action, dental fresh protect, and Listerine advance. I looked, I rinsed with Listerine every day, Listerine total every day. And I, when I was excited about it, I said, Listerine, I have some. And I found out that it's Listerine advance. So I'm going to go to the store. But I rinse every day, twice a day with hydrogen peroxide as well. But they say that, doing it for 20 to 30 seconds, will also kill the virus. So, ah, so those of us who aren't going to take the vaccine, there's things that we can do. There's some good news out here as well. But consider getting the vaccine nonetheless. I said to tell you that even when there are tests that seem to be insurmountable, God finds the creativity within us to find a way out. We heard about the, the increased levels, and then we hear about the possibilities of vaccinations and also being able to use basic mouthwash that we can purchase. But I'm here to tell you challenges, point number one today, challenges are inevitable. Somebody say inevitable. Yes. But you got to find your joy. James 1 and 2, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Consider it pure joy. Get excited about, you know, get to a place that you start to laugh and you get to a situation that seems so overwhelming to you that you don't know how you're going to get out of it. But that's in those positions where God wants to place us. We have to start depending more upon him. Come on, somebody. We have to depend more on God. Hallelujah. We are in a pandemic. The first step we have to do right now is to, to find out how to get to our joy. It's inevitable in a midst of a pandemic, there'll be some hard times, some financial difficulties, some, some mental health challenges, and even some health challenges, relationship challenges. You know, even getting our, our children educated so they don't fall and lose, fall back a year or two because they haven't gotten the proper education because of the, the, erratic, the erratic way that we're teaching our kids today. Because out of our own control, we're not blaming any school system. It's just a hard and difficult time. We are being challenged in life. It's about challenges and overcoming them. And I'm here to tell you today, you can have your joy in the midst of a challenge. Everybody throughout the global world is experiencing some sort of challenge. It's just not you alone. We're in this together. It's just not in North Carolina. It's Everywhere throughout the world, China, Korea, wherever it is today, it's happening in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Caribbean, in Eastern and Western Europe. We as a world are suffering under this challenge called a pandemic today. But I'm here to tell you, if we too can get our joy. Hallelujah. Yes. Matthew 5, 11 and 12. The Lord says, blessed are you when people insult you. Jesus is talking to his disciples, persecute you and falsely say all things of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Well, I'm telling you, when we're going through this persecution, hallelujah, when you're going through it and you're connected to Christ and you're 
doing what you need to do for the body of Christ. You're serving, you're loving, you're providing meals, you're providing helpful phone calls, you're providing a shoulder to cry or to lean on. When you are really building up and representing, being ambassadors of Christ so that God still is getting the victory through your ministry, your individual ministry, how small or how large it is still wide enough to be accepted by God. He understands that we will be persecuted for him. <laughs> people will lie on you. How many people will lie on you? They will backbite you. Come on, somebody. They'll be in your family and lie on you. How many people have been there? We've all been there, right? Now, come on, somebody. But here, I'm here to tell you, uh, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely cause you evil against you because of Jesus. I'd rather be a Christian believer than anything else in the world. I'd rather be on God's side of heaven than any place else in the world because I understand that what I go through for Jesus, what I go through for the cross, what I go through for, for heaven, what I go through to get to God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I understand that they, that persecution is only making me stronger. That persecution is only leading me to my great reward, which is in heaven. But I'm here to tell you how God told us to pray, how Jesus told us to pray. He says, as it is in heaven, <laughs> it shall be on earth. I'm getting my taste of earth. <laughs> I'm getting my taste of heaven right here on earth. Here in 511, it comes, this is the first time Jesus' public ministry that he, identification with, he, he, his public ministry that he identifies himself to be key to the beneficial participation in the coming kingdom of heaven. This is how people are to become part of God is now doing. God wants you, and this is what God is doing right here and right now. He's appealing to us to, to be connected to our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Specifically, to be persecuted on the account of Jesus is the appropriate continuation in the presence uh, of all persecution on account of the righteousness thus far befallen on all of God's people. We have to have all of this <laughs> in the midst of persecution, in the midst of being separated from our loved ones, in the midst of being disconnected from the workplace, in the midst of it all, we continue to serve God. It feels as though we're being left behind, but I'm here to tell you, you're being set up to make the last to become the first. Come on, somebody. Who wants to be first? To be first, you need to go in a position of servitude and serve God's people and be last and find humility in it. Become humble and let the Lord catapult you even when you feel like you're not going to make it. It's your persecution. It leads to your joy. Point number two, get tested and then find your victory. James 5 and 3 says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Get tested and then find your victory. Because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Ha! You want to learn about perseverance. There was a man in the Bible who had a speech impediment. He couldn't really speak with clarity and precision. He had a stuttering way of speaking. Our new, newly elected president, Mr. Biden, he also has a speech impediment. And so quite often they say when he slows down to speak, it's because he's been trained how to catch his speech impediment so that others don't recognize it. So and he's now the elected president of the United States of America. So even if you find yourself having difficulty speaking in the public, just know Moses and Biden, who's a president of the United States, soon to be, Moses, who was the leader of, uh, of, the, of God's chosen people, who we rely on the first five books of the Bible, he was tested ten times, we'll list today. The first time God tested Moses, hallelujah. See, Moses is a key person. See, he was not the perfect person, but he was the perfect leader at the perfect time because God anointed him to be the leader of an imperfect people. Come on, somebody. Does that sound like somebody like you? Just like somebody like you? You're not a perfect person, but... God is perfect, and he found perfection in calling you to serve your family, to serve your community, to serve your church, to serve your workplace, to, to expand your business, to expand your career. He, he called you out of your imper imperfection because God has a way to use who he wants to use who's down with him. But being called by God to be used by God will require you to go through some things that require you to persevere. Somebody say persevere. <laughs> Number one, God tells 
Moses to leave his homeland to be a stranger in a land called Canaan. Number two, immediately after his arrival in the promised land, Moses encounters a famine. Somebody know about a famine? Number three, the Egyptians seized his beloved wife, Sarah, and they brought her over to Pharaoh. He was dry. Number four, Moses. And Abraham faces incredible odds in the battle of the four and five kings. Number five, how Moses was tested and, and tried. He marries Hagar after not being able to have children with Sarah. Number six, God tells him to circumcise himself at an advanced age. I don't know about you, brothers, but I can't even imagine. Number seven, the king of Gerar captures Sarah, who he, Moses loved, and seemed to take her for himself. Just took his bride and said, I, it's going to be mine. Come on, you know, that's, can you imagine? Come on, brothers, what would you do? That's being, that's being tested. Number eight, God tells him to send Hagar away after having a child with her. Number nine, how he was tested and tried. Moses was tested and tried. His son Ishmael became estranged to him. Number 10, verse 22 of Genesis. God tells him to sacrifice his dear son Isaac upon an altar. Moses takes his son, being obedient to God. He climbs a mountain and he sees the altar. And Isaac is not really clear he doesn't see a sacrifice, an animal being taken, but he's going, being obedient to his father and trusting his father in this relationship between father and son. Being obedient to his father, Isaac goes and Moses goes, and he being obedient to his father. And he's being obedient. He places his son. And, and I, I'm, I can imagine Isaac like, dude, what you doing for that? I'm your son. But Isaac showed God that I'll do whatever you have me to do. I'll I'll persevere, I'll stand in this test, and I'll do what you want of me. Regardless of how much pain I believe it, it will cause to my heart, the Lord. But God rewarded him for his obedience. And he found his victory after being tested. Point number two, get tested and find your victory. For that, Moses was able to lead his people into the promised land. Because of that, today we're able to have the same relationship with God as God's chosen people because of Jesus' work over the cross that we now can share with them being considered God's chosen people. If it had not been for Moses being obedient, we wouldn't be able to have the victory today. Woo! Thank you, Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get tested and then find your victory. Point three. Finish what you start, lack nothing. James 1 and 4. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I'm going to move this forward because of time. Ephesians 4, 11 and 13 says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for the works of the service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We have to persevere to get to the point where we can get the whole measure and of the fullness of Christ. Where how's your maturity? I don't know about you, but I've been I was born in the church, raised in the church, fallen away from the church in the depths of sin, brought back up. And send again and brought back up again. And I still find myself, even as a pastor, being mature, maturing in my faith, becoming closer with my relationship with God. Sometimes it takes some time to get to a place that God can use you how he wants to use you. But I'm here to encourage you today. Don't give up. Don't give up. Finish what you start. Why? When you finish what you start, you will lack nothing. It says right here in the Word, James 1 and 4. That perseverance finishes work so that you may mature and complete, not lacking anything. It takes some maturity. Whatever God has given to you, I don't know if you're a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, or whatever your role that you have, he will equip you to do the work of the service that he has called for you to do. But you've got to finish what you start 
If you started school, finish school. If you started a business, keep it going. If, you, if you're in a marriage, don't let it go. Stay in, finish the work, mature in what has God blessed you with so that you can, at the end of it all, you will lack nothing. Lack nothing. Lack nothing. And I know it's hard for you to see that right now because there's so much that you can't get to right now. But I'm here to tell you, if you continue to stay in the race called life and not stop, man, Somebody hit me up this past week and said they thanked Rachel and I because a year ago during Thanksgiving, they were at a place that they were considering suicide. And they thanked us because we showed them love in that transitional period. It was nothing but God that did it. It wasn't us. It was God using us as vessels to show his love for this individual and for their family. And what had happened one year later is the fact that now they have a vibrant business and they're doing things that they couldn't even imagine they were going to do, but they stayed in it and now they lack nothing. They have a new business, a vibrant new existence, a new life, and life is pleasing yet challenging. This is challenging, but they're finding joy in the midst of life's challenges. I'm here to tell you, you can get to a place of depression to a point of you want to consider suicide and God will still pick you up, pluck you up from that place of distress and turn things around. I know mentally right now in this season of pandemic, you had some very strange thoughts. You never thought that you would do those type of things before because it was beneath you. It wasn't what you were taught, not what you believed. But I'm here to tell you right now, if you just hang in there, you will lack nothing. Finish what you start. Persevere. Fight the good fight of the faith. Woo! And get to the other side. Hmm. Point number four. I'm just going to call it persevere under trial. <laughs> persevere under trial. Persevere under hard times. Verse four, uh, James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will see the crown of life that the Lord has promised us who love, who love him. There's five crowns that the Bible talks about. There's the incorruptible crown. It's also called the imperishable crown. It's talked about in 1 Corinthians. Ha! Huh. The epistle Paul writes, deems this crown imperishable in order to contrast it with the temporal rewards Paul's contemporaries pursued. They were chasing after those things would pass away. But what God was calling us to do is to get this incorruptible crown, the one that doesn't tarnish, the one that doesn't go away, the one that doesn't perish. That's an incorruptible crown. In 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, it talks about the crown of righteousness. It says, it's probably, that crown is promised to those who love and anticipate the second coming of Christ Jesus. These, these Christians are the ones who have the, the crown of righteousness, are, are the ones who desire an, an intimacy with God. But then in, in 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, there's the crown of glory, the crown number three, the crown of glory is granted to the, the Christian pastors and priests, the clergy, who shepherd the flock in unselfish love, being a good example of others. That's all of us should be get that crown of glory. We become the good example for others to follow. God has that for his shepherds, a crown of glory. And the fourth crown I'm talking to you about, before we get to the fifth one, is a crown of rejoicing. It's also called the crown of auxiliary. It's uh, talked about in 1 Thessalonians in the second chapter and also in Philippians, the fourth chapter. It's given to people who engage in evangelism outside of the church, outside of the four walls of the church. They get this crown of rejoicing. Paul earned this crown, Thessalonian, uh, when, he had, when he had showed his faith in Jesus. Get you a crown of rejoicing. But here in this passage of scripture, in the 12th verse, it talks about this crown of life. It's talked about also in Revelation. It's bestowed upon those who persevere under trials, to reference to the crown, those who persevere, who Jesus comes and tells them at, at the church of Smyrna, not to be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Be faithful even unto the point of death, and I will give you a crown of life. Be faithful, even unto the point of death, and I will give you this crown of 
life. Who wants to get to the crown of life? But to get to that crown of life is the one that you have to go through some things that you had unexpected hardships, those things that you did not anticipate that you could even muster the strength to endure, to those things that, that hold you back to a place you want to throw up your hands and give up, those difficult and hard tests and trials that you say, God, if you are here for me, where, why haven't I heard from you? But here, I'm here to tell you there's victory in going through these difficult, hard times in the midst of a pandemic because God is shaping you and forming us into the man and woman of God he wants us to be because he sees tomorrow because he sits higher than us so he can see further than us. And I'm here to tell you, I see you in the future and you look much better, but it's all because God is here with us and he's walking, pushing, pulling, completing with us to stay in this fight. So stay in this fight, whatever you're going through. Don't give up. Hold on in there. Persevere under trial. Ha. Having stood this test called life, you will see the crown of life. The Lord promised to those who love him. Do you love Jesus? Have you fallen in love with Jesus? There's a song that says, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. He goes, he finishes, it's the best thing I ever done. I just came to me. I can't sing, but it's <laughs> in his arms. I feel protected. How he goes on with singing, right? In his arms. <laughs> Never feel neglected. But he says, falling in love. It's the best thing he's ever done. What's that brother's name from South Africa? He's a jazz musician, but he also sings that song. I mean, he's singing it at West Angeles. But I just want to tell you today, if you love the Lord, hang in there. He is not forsaking you, nor has he let you go astray. He's there. He may have some boundaries of what we can and cannot do, but I will tell you this, if you fall down, if you fall into sin, I invite you to get back up again today. God loves you so much. He said, if you fall down seven times, he'll pick you back up some 77 times. He's not going to give up on you, and neither will we here at the Empower Living Church. We love you that much that we're going to love you through this time of hardships, even in a time of victory. Huh. That's God's love. Woo! Let me pray for you as we get on out of here. Thank you for joining us this Sunday, but it's time to celebrate. It's time to give God a hand praise in this place. Someone shout hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. On the count of three, give God all his praise with me. From your vista, from your belly. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah be to God. Let's celebrate his goodness and greatness today. I'm Pastor Barry. Barry, let me pray you out. Father God, we thank you today, Father, for those who came before you today. For those who seek a special touch of you today, heal their bodies, their minds, and their souls, dear Lord. Let them experience your goodness and greatness. Fill them with your Holy Spirit today so we may fight the good fight of the faith and persevere through this test of this season right now, dear God, so we can find victory in all that you set out for us to do. We ask this in the great name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to seek salvation today, I invite you into the brotherhood and the sisterhood of Christ. If you want to be saved today, Glory be to God. Let me know. Hit, hit connect, and I want to be connected with you. Or send an email to salvation at empowerliving.church. I want to be connected with you in any shape, form, or fashion. Go to our website and be connected with me or send a, the salvation key or the connect key on the website. I just want to know that you want to be saved. I want to take this journey right alongside of you. Yes, I do. I'm believing that God has more for you than you can even imagine. Hallelujah. But if you're right there right now and you want to be saved, say this prayer with me wherever you are. Stretch your hand to your TV, on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, whatever it is. I don't know if you're on Power Living TV or YouTube or Facebook, wherever it is right now. Stretch out and raise and say, Father God, ha, huh, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a new day. I believe that Jesus came, died, and rose again to save me of my sins. 
I want to start anew again. And I love you. And I know you love me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are now saved. How? Oh, welcome to the kingdom. <laughs> welcome to the brotherhood. Let's fight this good fight of the faith together. Just know, stay in the race, stay in the fight, take on these tests called life, and there'll be victory on the other side. In Jesus' name. Bless you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the last closing word as we get out of here. God bless. Did you enjoy that word today? Yes, God still sits on the throne and we're so enthused and excited that you joined us here for that word. Hold on, get your victory. Or something like that. I'm just excited about what it is. I'm holding on. Are you holding on with me? Are you holding on with me? Hold on. I'm going to make a couple announcements. If you haven't given yet, then we invite you to give your tithes and your offerings today. Uh, giving Tuesday is this coming Tuesday. We are just encouraging people to give. If you're already tithing, let's continue. We're encouraging people to give more than they would normally have given. If you have a business, we invite you to give. You'll get an email if you connect with the church or a text inviting you to give on this Giving Tuesday. We have a goal to expand the production of this ministry here. We need some more uh, camera, we need one more camera, and a switcher, and uh, a couple of things for, to enhance the production so we may serve you better online or on demand or streaming. All right, so uh, four ways to give. You can give via Cash App at DELC. You can give uh, via text. Text the dollar amount to 84321. You can give, but you can't give. You can go via our website at Church. Giving tab. And four, you can mail it in or drop it off at 2201. Now join us every two every Sunday night for leadership talks every two at seven o'clock every uh, Tuesday night for our online group Bible study conversation called Life Lessons. So it's really been exciting every two Sun every Tuesday at seven and every Thursday Thursday for Grow Your Wealth. We have a conversation about how to grow your wealth as a small business owner or entrepreneur. We want to meet your needs holistically as a church in the body of Christ. All right. Audrey, for this, we love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Come back and join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m.